Hi everyone, <laughs> this is Olivia and Alona here and we're heading to Lao for rugby. Nope. <laughs> Hi everyone, <laughs> Olivia and Alona here and we're here at LEX and we have very exciting news because we are heading to Lao. We're heading there for rugby because I love rugby, I play rugby, she is an avid fan of rugby. We're going there to meet people, eat food, experience cultures, and See what the rugby is all about in that corner of the world. Just spread the game. That's spread what I love it. to do. We're waiting here at LAX. Our flight's soon. We go to San Francisco, San Francisco, Singapore, Singapore to Lao. So it's a big travel day. Uh, we're hoping these shirts get us um, business class. No such luck yet. None. Currently, we are sitting uh, middle seats, middle one seats. right behind one another. So yeah. we'll just be slipping snacks through the crack. Yeah. But so. come along with us. It's going to be awesome. ourselves ramen and now we are ready to board our 16 hour flight to Singapore. We put on our compression socks. We are sitting close to each other. We tried to change seats, did not work out, uh, but we are ready to go. We are going to try to sleep as much as we can and then get ready. Hello, then get ready for a day in Singapore. Got to make sure the hair looks good. Hello everyone, so I am here in Vientiane, Laos, and I am so excited for this experience. You're probably like, why are you there? So when I was in New Zealand for the World Cup, I was able to meet some people from Child Friend Rugby, Lao Rugby, and who do the Pass It Back program. I saw them and I was like, I need to know what you guys are doing there. You guys are doing so much amazing stuff for the game of rugby, and Lao is really trying to push this game for young girls, for people in you know impoverished areas, so I'm super excited to be here. We have a clinic going today. Do I see be getting Lao? No, I don't. Am I just gonna be smiling and nodding a lot of it? Yeah, but I'm gonna learn so much. I can't wait to see these girls play and see what they're learning through rugby, their leadership, um, just their community building skills. So this will be so great. to be growing the game because for me growing the game doesn't just involve the US it involves the whole world because I think rugby has the power to change lives for anybody
So we are now heading to a province or an area called Zhangquang, up in the north, I guess very small. Super excited to go. Uh, we were only in Vientiane for a day, so we're less, less than a day. But we're headed there, the flight's like half an hour, to a very small plane. We're gonna immediately get off the plane and go to another rugby clinic. So hopefully we get to have a good sleep tonight and then we're back at it. traditional Lao barbecue, it was like a Korean barbecue. Uh, we are, we've had a busy day. A lot of rugby, a lot of uh, little kids, but we're gonna keep pushing on, okay. It's a big building. We've made it to Zhang Kuang and we're here at a uh, competition day for the rugby girls and it is like they're doing little scrubs and everything. Um, it's so cool to see, they're so excited, there's so many teams here. Uh, last night I was able to work with a team called the Barbies and they're so cute and so passionate about it. They were just like, you know, running on like a dirt patch but they had their Crocs on but they just loved it and they were so into it. Um, they are having a ball out there. It's so fun to see. It's so cool to see that also the coaches and the refs, like the leadership that they're bringing here and like how they're uplifting these girls. It's, it's really amazing. And I was reading something about it, um, how in Laos, rugby is considered a girl's sport. And that is something just beautiful. So here in Laos rugby, they use the Pass It Back curriculum, which is really cool because it doesn't just focus on like rugby on the field, but focuses on like life skills. So yesterday at practice, we did like a feelings module where we just talked about feelings and how to express feelings. And it's okay for, you know, men and women to express feelings. So we all sat around in a circle and expressed like, what's hard for us to express maybe sadness or what's easy to express happiness. So I didn't understand a lot of it, but I was able to have a translator. So to hear them talk openly about that and not just be about sport, I think is really important to grow these girls off the field as well. There are a lot of players who started in and then come into the club. Oh, cool. So the club here, Lao Kang founded it, it's called Zing Kong Rugby Club. And so a lot of those girls are going into that and oh. playing contact with the club. bit of a rainy day here in Laos but more rugby is to be done. Uh, today is more of a tackle session with adults whereas yesterday and the day before were all younger kids. Last night we got to go into one of the coaches homes he invited us for dinner and that was a truly amazing experience because to be in a Lao home and to have dinner with them we sat on the floor I ate like three of these grilled fishes and the food was impeccable we drank Lao beer but I think what was really cool about it is like at, right when we got there Everyone just started helping with things. Everyone started cooking. There was no like, oh, do you want me to help with anything? People started cutting things and grilling things. It was just like a team effort and something I don't think you really see in America. Uh, but it was just an amazing experience. And 
I'm learning so much, making so many memories. I can't wait to see what, you know, what else I do. Took a quick pit stop in the market and there's so much happening here. There's like fish being grilled over there, food being cut, live live fish everywhere. We're getting donuts because I love donuts, you know it's about me. Um, but it's just so cool to walk around and see everything that's for sale. Um, and we have great people here with us who are just like pointing everything out to us and telling everything. Um, but of course, yeah, I'm getting donuts. jars and what's cool about this is that first off they're literally massive stone jars back from the iron age but the thing is that nobody fully knows why they're here what the reason for them is mostly they know it's like probably for burials few, uh, funerals they would put the bodies in them and for other reasons but still not sure like was it for trading routes what was it used for um it's just literally just these mass i mean they're massive they're bigger than me and not fully sure what they're made out of but they're all over the field and there's many sites like this and these sites have been bombed and been destroyed in some ways but still like it's so cool these these are old jars people so we didn't plan this but we're in a rice paddy and we're actually planting the rice here and it is so muddy and you sink deep into it but she taught us how to plant the rice and we, this wasn't planned but what a cool experience we get to do. Our, one of our friends who's here with us, she just went up to them and was like, hey, can we just come out to your rice field? And they let us in, they gave us some rice, and now we're rice farmers. <laughs> this magnificent massive buddha statue and we're wearing traditional Hmong clothing so we first asked like is it okay if we wear this we want to be very respectful of the culture but the Hmong people that we're with were so excited to have us appreciate their culture wear their clothing and really see what it's all about so I usually you're supposed to wear like a jacket over it but I tried on like three different jackets and my shoulders would not fit but they wear this for like um they said their new year weddings and other ceremonies it's a big part of their culture so we're so honored that we get to wear it and experience it as well and be here at this magnificent place I think this is an experience that not many people get to do and to do it here with these amazing people it's like this is once in a lifetime we just arrived at our hotel in this really small province we took like it was an hour and a half drive through very bumpy roads but look at this view is that not amazing you know what let me get out of this this is spectacular and the best view of all olivia <laughs> We're with one of the coaches from Lao Rugby Federation and we are picking mint to stuff in the fish that they fished earlier. We're in their farm where they get all of the other fruits and vegetables we're gonna eat. Um, there's rice patties everywhere. It's, um, it's really farm to table here. So we took a quick pit stop and we're watching um, them make sins, which are the traditional garments and skirts they wear. They, it's like a big loom that they use. Um, this is actually one of the players who's making it, but it can take up to like four to five days to weave these and they're so intricate and so beautiful. I want to buy all of them. Uh, we're going to go find some, but it's just like this process and just watching her make it is crazy. The, the intricacy and the artwork that goes into it. Pretty much rock climb they called it a hike but it was a rock climb up this mountain in Vambiang and there's a actual like motorbike up here that you can take photos on and then look at this magnificent view do I know how we're gonna get down no I'm a little concerned but I think it was worth it for this view 
Our time in Laos has come to an end and it has been the most amazing eye-opening trip. Uh, I think what made us so special was the people that we were with. They cared about us so much. They did everything for us. They, they Whatever we wanted, they helped us out. They brought us to all the coolest places. We did all the coolest things with them. We got to truly have a Lao experience because of them. Uh, we're finishing off at this beautiful temple here. It is hot. The sun is bright. <laughs> but it's beautiful and it's it's the rainy season but it's been absolutely beautiful that while we've been here and even when it rains it's amazing so all i can say is definitely visit laos if you can definitely go with a group of people who know lao because the lao people are the mo kindest most helpful you'll ever meet and the food is delicious so signing off mm -hmm.